Australia's property boom. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian Heiser here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. Today we're going to look at this article. New property boom looms imminent with a range of indicators pointing to price growth. Now, before I get into this, I'm going to replace my coffee with a nice pale ale in my stein today because I'm going to need it for this one I think I'm definitely going to need it and it's a Wednesday afternoon cheers ah that's good that's good you know time to stress when I'm doing the coffee the uh, the beer in the morning guys so let's just bring up a video I want to draw everyone's attention to and this is a, a piece by John Adams and Martin North, the property price fallacy that will fundamentally shock Australia. This is on there the in, in the interest of the people YouTube channel. Now, if you have not watched this video, I know it's long, it's 56 minutes. It is certainly something I would encourage you to watch. Put on the headphones, listen to it while you're doing the dishes. It just gives you some insight into some of the issues surrounding well, the indicators and pricing of real estate and, and what they're all you know, saying is justification for the media reporting on this potential boom. Because again, it's just more of the same stuff. It's more FOMO, fear of missing out, boom, 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 price growth. All the indicators are pointing to this. And yet every month, the RBA who are doing all the indicators are completely shocked or surprised. And this morning I referenced a video by Professor Stephen Keane about showing an example of alternative modeling of the economy and how drastic the results could be. So you've got to be quite, quite skeptical whenever you're presented with anything like this, and particularly if it's from one data source. So as I take a swig of my pale ale, let's have a look. So a new property boom looks imminent with a range of indicators pointing to price growth. There's a lot of uncertainty around Australia's economy, but there's a huge activity in one area, real estate. A boom is now here. A boom is now here. Wow. So, uncertainty surrounding the national economy has done little to impact the rapidly growing confidence that another property boom is imminent. New data suggests. I'd go... New, well, one new data source is suggesting, spurred on by the media, almost 18 months of declines in median house prices in Australia's two largest markets, Sydney and Melbourne, ended in June after prices fell more than 10% from their peaks. Okay. Okay, guys. You have to keep this in mind. Sydney and Melbourne make up most of our market. And they're talking about, uh, you know, house prices which can be affected by one one portion of the sector and we've spoken about previously where you know a lot of this activity is in the upper end the higher quality stock the more expensive housing but consecutive monthly increases in dwelling values since coupled with exceptionally high auction clearance rates and a lift in home loan approvals paint a picture of a rebound in real estate fortunes Okay. Okay. Well, let's keep going. Data House Core Logic said the National Home Value Index recorded its third month of growth in September, up 0.9% across all capital cities. Now, here's the question. Here's the issue. And this is discussed in great detail in this video. The one by um, Adams and North. And Martin North actually did another video where he spoke to the economist from the REA. And a lot of it's to do with how this data is recorded. Remember, this is only one source. This, is, this article is based on the data from CoreLogic. There are other sources of data and there's conflicting opinion. So, you know, what should we trust? What should we trust? Sydney is up a commune... <laughs> Cumulative 3.3%. Melbourne is up 3.2% in August and September. 
with spring in full swing. A traditionally busy time in real estate, industry pundits say the storm clouds look to have cleared and a new period of growth is here. Okay, what is pushing that growth? What is pushing that growth? Is it consumer confidence? No, it's not. We looked at business confidence. That's down. Is it increased no. manufacturing capacity? Nope. What, what is it? What is the what's the fundamental thing driving it? Is it immigration? I mean, a big part of the last boom is foreign investment. That was a big part. This chart here shows you percentage of new building approvals that were for foreign investors. Look how high it got over 90% at one stage. That's insane. That's insane. So Aussies are more confident. Well, guys, let me know. Are you more confident? Or do we need to crack open more pale ales all around? Consumer comparison website finder.com.au has been tracking property sentiment for the past six months and has found the proportions of Australians who think now is the time to buy has lifted since May. More and more Australians are feeling confident about the property market. We're, we've found money expert Bessie Hassan told news.com.au. Uh, is anyone watching this content feeling more confident? I would be shocked if you are. Particularly if, if you're watching the stuff from North and Adams and other people just talking about the economy. Maybe it could just be what people choose to expose themselves to. Because we don't notice in this piece, there's been no mention of other data sources. It's only referred to one. So some people may not even realize there's only one, you know, there's alternatives, alternative ways of representing the data. And that's how something's presented as, as completely legitimate, what they're saying here. But it can't, it's not really being challenged to the audience. So when we were, when we asked whether now is a good time to buy, 59% currently believe that it is, which is up from 54% in May. And 52% think property in their area will increase somewhat or significantly in the next 12 months. In Sydney, 53% of those surveyed expected prices to rise in the next year. Well, 61% in Melbourne also believe values would rise, she said. Okay, why? Did they ask why? Did they? This time last year, Saturday auctions in most capital cities were ghost towns, where you'd be hard pressed to find many bidders. Clearance rates were flat and prices continued a downward trend with the average time of property spent on the market also higher than it had been for several years. Since then, Raymond Mitchell, director of Gold & Co Property Advisory, said competition had strengthened among buyers with bigger offers made and sales completed faster. There's been increased traffic through open house inspections and there seems to be, have been much higher conversions of these to registered bidders on auction days, Mr. Mitchell said. You can see how this has played out in consistent improvement in auction clearance rates, including sales prior to auction. Now, okay, auction clearance rates, they keep talking about that. It's just a percentage and it's completely variable depending upon the amount of product on the market. If there's not as much supply, the clearance rates could look better. They haven't mentioned that Tasmania had you know, 100% at some stages. 100% auction clearance rates. How many auctions do you think Tasmania had? If you had a guest one, you were right. So there's no doubt this is having an effect on value. They're increasing across many of, sorry, they're increasing across many of the markets we monitor, particularly in the capital cities. Despite high prices, making it difficult for first home buyers to crack the market, research by lenders and mortgage insurance provider Genworth has found that millennials remain determined to buy their own home. It found 94% of young people consider home ownership a high priority, with 66% of those surveyed hopeful of buying in the next five years. More than half are working to save a deposit, and three in four think now is the right time to act. Janworth's research also found young Aussies were shifting their expectations in order to meet the market, focusing on different areas or property types. Well, that's good. That's good. More listings are shifting. 
The latest data on monthly home loan approvals from the Australian Bureau of Statistics shows an increase in both the total number of mortgages written in August as well as their value. There were 32,740 home loans approved in August for owner-occupier homes, up 1.9% on the previous month. New lending commitments for investment dwellings also rose 5.7%, up 4.8 billion in August, with Queensland recording the strongest growth, up 10.4%. That indicates a renewed confidence among investors who are historically the first to flee a shaky market and among the last to re-enter a reviving one. We've seen a bump in house prices in Sydney and Melbourne, and the latest ABS figures show a 2.9% increase in the total value of home loans settled in August, Mr. Sun said. That indicates a resurgence in property. Auction clearance rates are pushing 70% or more consistently showing strong demand. So here we have location, change in dwelling values. Let's have a look at Brisbane. Oh, okay. No, I'm still down. Oh, we're all down in a year. <laughs> Perth, damn. Yeah, what's the average value in Brisbane? 492. Oh, there you go. Oh, sorry, the median value. Combined capitals. So what's pulling it up, guys? Sydney, Melbourne. Look at those averages. Those medians, sorry. Look at that. What's driving growth? Renewed activities from buyer is, buyers is far outpacing the number of available properties on the market, which is contributing to uh, sorry contributing strongly to price increases. Mr. Mitchell said, stock levels in Sydney and Melbourne, particularly, were historically low at levels not seen since 2007. He said, many agents are reporting a decline in their listing pipeline by up to 35% for the same time last year, which is a substantial drop. Well, do you think this might have a, an effect on all of this? Guys, do you think this might have an effect? Is this article being written to encourage more people to sell? We don't believe there will be easing of supply anytime soon, so buyers can expect more of the same into 2020. It seems many would-be sellers were sitting on their hands hoping to cash in later on a strengthening market, he said. Pardon me. I need some more beer. A sense of certainty after the federal election was combined with the Reserve Bank's cuts to the official interest rate, Ms. Hassan said. And a number of economists now expect another reduction by the end of the year. We don't know yet if we're at the bottom of the rate cycle and there are two more RBA meetings this year, she said. Several factors meant buy, buyer groups were set to benefit if they were in a position to act quickly. Quickly, there's that FOMO, Mr. Mitchell said. With a combination of ease of lending restrictions, increased approvals, and more full traffic through a diminishing pool of property, competition is absolutely heating up. What does everyone think? Do you trust the CoreLogic data? You trust what we're being told? by the people in this article. Do you think that it's heating up? What is driving it? Immigration? Demand? The interest rate cuts, so people are jumping. Is it just dead cat bounce? What do you think would happen if we hit recession next year? If unemployment, which only bumped up a tiny little bit, heads down? Or if the trade war between China and the US drags on a little bit longer. Or that first phase that is giving everyone confidence tends to not be as exciting as everyone thinks. We'll see. What happens if Corbyn wins in Britain? I wonder what will happen there. Anyway, guys, let me know what you think in the comments. I'm skeptical. I'm skeptical. Like, share and subscribe. If you enjoy my content and would like to help me produce more, I have a Patreon and subscribe star in the links below and every bit helps it does not all go to be this is a rare occasion because they seem to be talking this up again and again anyway guys take care have a great day and i will talk to you tomorrow cheers